let's get into it. The start of the game, Dune Awakening, begins off-world on this large spaceship. Show yourself, child. It is here, in the presence of the Reverend Mother, the character creation begins. Now the first thing you'll do is choose your preset avatar. Oh my god, that guy has such a strong so mustache. Are heavily inspired <laughs> by the Denis Villeneuve movies. Once you've chosen a base visual look, you can then move into the depth Finally, of the character Finally, my nose tip and make size slider. About how your character feels, both in terms of age, but also a plethora of physical attributes. Our goal in giving players access to a detailed character creator is to really allow them to create the avatar that lets them fulfill their fantasy of living out their dreams on oh my god pupils yeah oh my god that's so scary <laughs> they made the pupils so small Th those are some there eyes are a multitude of hair cells <laughs> oh oh that's sick okay and other that's someone i wouldn't fuck with for sure for players to choose from Whoa. Oh wow. You can even choose different styles of lipstick and eyeshadow. Abstract shadow. <gasps> lipstick. Yo, my character's lips are gonna be mm poppin'. Dark Let's mode. go! Oh my god, lip gloss. Hell yeah. Hashtag my Queezats had rack. Oh, and then you just fucking throw oh, it out of that work. Oh, just went back to the default. Your character. From height, arm, thickness, arm thickness, all the way up, all the way up, thickness, all the way down, neck. skip like day, yep. neck length. Gotta, got, I, I gotta look like a Dorito. Once you finish your character, you choose your name and enter the world. Declan. Wow. Hey, hey just like our editor. And once you've customized the avatar wow. that you want to play Here, in the game. This person worked so hard to make such a cool looking character and then went character to the default. Creation. Then I will sift your Which is just me playing Mass lies. Effect. Every time I start up Mass Effect, I'm like, maybe I'll where make someone. Nope. The second phase of character creation is where you, you can, as a person what the who fuck? may or may not oh, know fun. anything about Dune, get to make choice. Where you... Where were you born? Yo! Chisuk. Chisuk. Musician like Halley, That's a deep cut. Fuck yeah, dude. Giddy Prime, yeah. Chisik, Kaladin, Kitan, Ix. The rest of these are classic, but Chisik is a second bit of a phase deep of character creation. A world of is where water. you, as a person who may or may not know anything about Dune, get to make choice. The Order of the Imperium is rooted in the uh, Falferlich. What is your place? So you can get to decide if you're, like, part of the. So, the vast peasant labor force that drives the Imperial Engine. Pions are bound to the fief in which they live. About who you were. <laughs> you get to be a, I think a low peasant. You're like, I dream of living my true life, a penniless peasant. <laughs> the game starts. Where you come from, what caste you belong to in the Dune universe, and of course, perhaps most importantly, who your mentor was. Who was your mentor? Your mentor. Yeah, that's ah, cool. cool. That's character so class, basically. And this determines your ability to, like your starting ability, your training. Determines your starting. So they had compel. Again, we're kind of making the voice into a witchcraft, but whatever. Um, Mentat, scan nearby enemies and objects, gaining information about them. Skills when you enter the game. Hmm. You must have been very young. The mind must be prepared or the training does not take. The test is almost complete. Have you spoken truth? Love the glow globe in the background. Neil. Put your right hand in the box. Put your hand in the box. I hold at your neck the Gom Jabbar. I hold at your neck the Gom Jabbar. The hard <laughs> of the enemy. Don't pull away or you will die. Hey, Great our podcast. And the currents of intrigue run deeply. Arrakis is the key. And the Fremen. The Fremen are missing. Whoa. You will go to Arrakis as our agent prisoner. You have one task. Find the Fremen. 
Wake the sleeper. You will know when it is done. The Fremen are missing? Interesting. That's got to be part of That's the That's an interesting concept. Story progression. Finding now, the Fremen, maybe. Jump ahead coming a upon a siege. Uh, skipping past several events just to sort of get uh, into the early new player experience of the game. And you'll see that the player, after various shenanigans, <laughs> wakes up here. Post in a cave. shenanigans. In a cave. And oh. as we sort of look around the cave, we'll notice that it's filled with Fremen and uh, the remnants of, you know, this ancient culture. So now as the player takes their first steps in the world, they're really here Mala vest. amongst the dead. Mala boots. And so the first question they should be asking is, what happened here? That's like a Beretta vest. People. Beretta boots. <laughs> and, you know, this is just a place where we give players a little yeah, bit of time. Yeah, maybe I didn't quite realize Mala settings, was the brand. Get a feel for the movement keys. AR-15 and jacket. And into the cave. And they'll stumble upon their first major interaction point, which is the Frem kit. Skip it. Frem kit in our game Hard mode, skip both it. both a, a backpack for the player, of course, but also really a guide. Um, the Fremen used to pack these with Scrap interesting there. objects that they could use to survive in the desert, and it's no different from the player. So here they begin their first crafting experience, crafting a small scrap knife out of metal that was in the Frem kit. These caves have been moisture sealed. Oh, uh, cool. In order to preserve the moisture of those within the cave. And so the player, as they explore, will be able to use their scrap metal knife to pierce the seals. Oh, this looks great. And escape. Great textures in the environment. So really, this entire area, built using Unreal Engine 5, is just to sort of get the player and ease them into the path. A lot of survival games have very abrupt, very harsh beginnings. And we tried to, you know, make the experience of joining June Awakening just a little easier. Just give people a little bit of a feel for the world before we really toss them out into the harshness that is the desert of Iraq. Yeah, true for like so MMORPGs. It's usually like, going to use that to welcome to the hub. Go kill Once wolves. Here, <laughs> it's like, you'll see the stamina bar okay. in the bottom left appears. And now that we have stamina, we can climb. Hey. The climbing system in Dune Awakening is based in part on the one that we built for Conan Exiles. It's a free form climbing system. It can be used to climb almost anywhere. And as nice. you'll see later, the new technology available in Dune Awakening, such as suspensor belts, allows us to do even more interesting things with traversal. So once we finish that first little section, we're jumping ahead, we're going straight into the harsh real world of Arrakis. And here are your first steps on Arrakis. Your ornithopter has crashed, and you've got to escape from the crash site immediately because the sandworm always comes. And what you have to keep in mind is these are the little ones. So these are the first sandworms you encounter in the game. There's bigger ones later on. The other thing that oh, you have to pay attention like to as a meter. player is sunstroke yeah. and heat. So if you see in the top middle of the UI here, we've got this sunstroke bar building up. The longer you stay oh, Jesus, in the that's sunlight, so fast. the more chance you say, have of that's getting into the stressful. sunstroke state. And of course, <laughs> our player here, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, has decided to stay in the sun and try harvesting water from plants. So he has become sunstroked. Sun sunstroke gives you a debuff. It means that your water goes down much faster than it normally would. Oof. That means you'll need to drink more often. So stick to the shadows, avoid the sun. It will eventually wear off if you stay in shade long enough. God damn it. I didn't mean to pause the ultimate. Nope, I'm not interested. So now that we've made our way out of the first part of the desert and we're heading deeper in, we're going to start to harvest in the game world. So harvesting in a lot of these survival games is quite similar. In this case, we're picking up items, but we're about to pull out what's known as the cut array. And what we do with the cut array is we analyze structures to find their weak points, and then we cut along those lines to break open the structures and gain the resources inside. 
this is like mining. We, uh, we apply it both to rocks, we apply it to metals in the game world. And at the start of the game as a player, you'll just be scrounging around, picking up, you know, finding structural weak points in rocks that you can harvest, breaking them apart and taking those pieces with you. Now we've jumped ahead a little bit, and we see that the player is starting Constant to be affected sunstroke. by the spice in the air. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this means that players need to get somewhere Drugs. safe in shelter before the spice overwhelms them and overwhelms their senses. And this is a, another large part of the game. We're not going to show too much of it today. But spice is a very important part. With the world broken apart by the War of Assassins, there are NPC bases scattered all over Arrakis. We're switching to a different character now, one who's slightly more advanced, and he's using his binoculars to mark an NPC outpost. We're going to mark that. That marker will then appear on our compass. And you're able to approach them in any way you like. In this case, oh, our character so uses a shiga wire claw combined with a suspensor belt to get up to high ground and approach the enemy base from above. Kind of one of the interesting things about Dune Awakening is just how you can combine the different abilities. And this is how traversal really plays into the game. Like, you end up being able to attack these bases from any angle that you'd like. Now, our player is going to craft the first gun in the game, known as a Mauler Pistol, which translates to, you know, the basic kind of weapon in the game. As you may know, in Dune, bullets are not the preferred type of ammunition. Instead, it's darts, which are fired at a slower rate in order to try and attempt to pierce shields. Now this early in the game, enemies don't really have shields, so the player is going to sneak into the base from above and use a combination of their early abilities. In this case, dropping out a grenade, then sneaking around the corner, and beginning oh, yes. to get into the men's head ability. Head on. <laughs> right. Dropping grenade. a grenade, sneaking now, around the corner. Are the basic Buddy, you already dropped a grenade. The universe. There's no more and sneaking their trees reflect that. Grenades, so funny. Claws I use my Mentat ability. And of course, this fucking gun. They're able to take <laughs> oh yes, the Benny Chesarit trying to bend technique. Really allow you to Flash change bang. your approach to combat. Dune Awakening is Very a stealthy. third person shooter with melee and abilities. And it's the combination of melee, abilities and range shooting that creates what we call combined arms in the game. Now we've taken a fair bit of damage. That does look battle. pretty fun though, just that like combat style. Ourselves up with bandage. Bandages yeah, it's giving destiny. Time, so you can't with just the ability yeah. to float with the suspensor. You have to actually get into safety. Or even parts cover. of like Mass Effect 2. The sort yeah. of like action now over the shoulder shooting. Switch yeah. To a agree. slightly different character to show off more of the melee that we have in the game. Because you're about to see that when a character gets in close... <laughs> Less grenades. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> this character has sword master. I'm doing a grenade build. First of all, I'm a sword master who uses charge. exclusively grenades. This is about getting grenades. in close to do damage in combat. <laughs> and then quickly switch, setting up to a riposte, which allows you to parry. Oh, and shit. And return massive amounts of damage to your enemy. Of course, later in the game, when enemies have shields, melee is a much more emphasized style of combat. And you see that... When a player is not really equipped to handle range characters, they have to fall back on their abilities to get in close. Now, that's kind of cool. We switched again. Now we're I like the idea of progressing toward melee. One of these abilities yeah. is known Looked as a battlefield little clunky. calculation. Using battlefield calculation, the Mentat is able to calculate from anybody that they see what they're carrying and what they're wearing. I don't like the sound of that. Now we've dropped out our Hunter Seeker. Hey. And we're using our Hunter Seeker ability to take down enemies in the world really quickly. Oh, shit. Nice. That's cool. The yeah. Hunter Seeker was cool. Now, obviously, when you're playing with a friend, you want to combine <laughs> your abilities and work together. In this case, the Mentat's able to point out to their friend <laughs> where... Grenade. This dude grenades. loves his grenades. He's a grenade build. When enemies go down sometimes, they go into... <laughs> Benny Gesserit acolytes and using mostly grenades. ...execute them or continue to fight. <laughs> ah yes, the three types of combat, prana bendu weirding. After uh, a quick reload, it's back into the battle, with our friend coming from above and throwing out one more grenade. Get the fuck out of here with the grenades! <laughs> That's, That's so totally funny. unnecessary. So unnecessary, there's one guy left. <laughs> and once you've defeated your enemies in battle, sometimes you just gotta take their blood. Oh. <laughs> okay. True. Yeah, true. 
in order to oh, get blood sack. the players right. to have to craft themselves this blood sack and this blood extractor and use it to harvest blood from their fallen enemies. Gotcha. Now, in, in our funny. game, it's not always a good thing to just take blood from people. It's potentially bad and can only be used for certain things. Once you've extracted the blood, you can then of course drink it, as you'll see here. The player takes a big sip from their blood bag. <laughs> but when they do that, it causes a debuff because the blood is not exactly pure and drinking blood for water is not exactly a one-to-one -one scenario. So you'll see that our health bar got shorter while our water bar went up. And uh, so being a blood drinker is not always looked upon in the right mm. way. Mm. Mm. Cannibalism. Huh. <laughs> of course, once you've played the game for a little while, you'll start wanting to build your own base. And the first part of that is placing down what we call a sub-thief console. A sub-thief console allows you to claim a small part of Arrakis as your own, but it does in turn mean that you'll start to owe taxes to the Emperor. So, here we are with our building system, and you can see that we have two types of building here. We have the holograms, which show in the beginning. I call them Solido projections internally. And we have the way that you fill in which is by holding down the mouse button, in this case. So, the cool thing about this is it allows us to have this cooperative building system. So you'll see that one player places out oh, the Solido fun. projections. The co-op building. And the other player fills them in with the materials from their inventory. I don't this know that I've ever seen that, that in a play together and game before. In an interesting Just like setting game. the... I mean, Subnautica does it, where We've if you've begun building something, it'll sit there as a ghost until you finish it or cancel. Games. So we've created a system yeah. called the Blueprint Building but System. But both people are building to save a the copy same of their base, base together. As one of these yeah, giant holographics. Cool. Then they can oh, take them out cool. into the world. And the blueprint. And place them out wherever they like. I like this rebuild. blueprint system because that's for me. And we have another I'm not a builder. Yeah. I'm not a creative game, you to geometric take person these, in video games. You know, big architectural designs. So this is nice that I can just like find a blueprint and print it out. Once again, this is a way to quickly move your base around the world. If you've got a design you like, you don't have to you know, throw it out immediately. And it allows you to create these interesting masterpieces. It also, as you can see here, allows you to, you know, if you're not artistically minded and you don't like building big bases, you can buy them from mm. other people. <laughs> That's me. That's me. me Nothing beats a night out with a merry bend. Dumb. Dumb. Yeah, don't drink and drive, folks. Thanks, fandom. Once you finish crafting a base, you want to that fill was, it that ad with was all sponsored kinds of fandom. machines, like fabricators, and refineries. And of course, hearkening back to the blood extraction we just did, we've got the blood purifier. Yeah, uh, okay. Do is that makes sense. From our Turns it into water. Deposit it into the blood purifier, and over time, it will refine into lovely fresh water, which can then extract into our leaderjons and carry with us out into the desert. Hell yeah. While there See, are many varieties yeah, look, of fabricators Google. that you can use to craft things in the game, one of the most exciting things is crafting yourself a vehicle. So we're opening the technology menu, and from here we're able to purchase the design for a sandbike. A sandbike is one of the early vehicles available to players in the game. And you can kit it out with different types of modules, including an extra seat which allows you to bring your friends with you. So in this menu, you can see we're fabricating ourselves a sandbike. Oh, I cannot fucking wait for this, dude. So the player is going to the menu here, they're crafting different things which will make up their sandbike. And as you can see, it prints out in this kind of 3D printer type way where all the materials are turned into these particles which then come together to form the different pieces of the sandbike and you can see it's sort of all happening in the background here and if we go out into the world view you can actually see the pieces forming up inside the fabricator so a base with lots of these fabricators going is actually pretty cool and pretty busy once we've done we jump back in we pull things out of the queue chuck them into our inventory and then we use the welding tool to place out vehicle pieces now again this is a cooperative activity we've thought about multiplayer so any other player could be working with you to place modules and pieces of this bike and so, we're going to assemble this bike, but of course when wow. you work on larger wow. vehicles... That looks much more customizable than I would have expected. ...to work together to craft big things like transport ornithopters or sand crawlers. 
And so we're going to add the body to this. And we're going to add an extra seat just in case we want to bring our friend with us out into the Hell water. Hell yeah. Once the bike's been assembled and fueled up, you jump on and you can head out to explore the greater areas of Arrakis. Ah, cool. Interesting. That's fun. I, I can really see that Heading out crafting into the world part, customizing it in that experience. way, that being like a pretty addicting and part of the game. As loop. you explore the universe, yeah. you'll find certain dynamics. Also just the idea of like, hey, let's go out into the in desert case, and try to find some shit, the and then like, we're being chased by worms, get the fuck out! You know, and like, which falls from that the being sky, fun, you know? Yeah. All over the sand. So we head out there to see what we can get, to harvest and gather as much as we can. Of course, the problem is, this is extremely visible to everybody in the nearby area. So people so hurry will up. see this. And so Why are you taking so long? In a long? PvP area, you might f suddenly find yourself coming into competition with other players. In a PvE area, you might just find other people competing with you to get to the loot first. I'm going to stay in the PvE areas. I don't really care for, yeah, like, that'll be me. competing with other people. No. I've never course, liked PvP. At night time, there are different kinds of threats. I even because avoid PvP in like Destiny. Like, ugh. At night, I do. I do the like Sardar the car, raids where you work together desert, with people with huge yeah. spotlights, searching for players. Now this player is over here, harvesting dew with a dew reaper, sucking the water off the surface of these plants, <laughs> and they've been captured and seen. <laughs> That's the sound effect. Like... Oh. And oh, oh, shit. Send down oh wow! The highlighter off in the distance was gorgeous. And destroy the players. Wait, wait, I didn't see it. I'm gonna go back. By the Sada car. Right when oh, you shit. Yeah. And oh, shit. the Sada car send down troops who come floating down out of the sky to attack and destroy the players. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. Okay. Don't fuck with the Sada car. Now, Lesson I've learned. Traveling on the surface at any time risks drawing a sandworm. But there are certain things which we've created to draw players out of their comfort zones. So in this case, there's a special flower type sand? of sand here on the surface, flower. known as flower sand. flower sand. Flower sand, according to the books, is the softest kind of sand, and players can use it to refine it into a variety of different materials that they need for crafting. So you want to come out into the desert and you want to try and find flower sand, but you have to be wary and pay attention, because as you harvest, you risk drawing the attention of the sandworm. Yeah, I can definitely you imagine, like, beast. you and I both have the collection guns just, like, running out. out. Boom, 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 boom. Get, get back on. Get the fuck out. You can see in the middle know? of the screen yeah. the indicator showing us that the sandworm is angry. And it's coming after us. Oh. And our only option now... <laughs> it's angry! Is to, get back to rocky ground, or the sandworm's gonna take us. Don't run! Oh my goodness. I know, you're I running know right into its fucking mouth. But somehow they managed to get to the safety. Yes, yeah, somehow. These two adventurers had no right to make it out. Wishing of for life. death, yeah. <laughs> Once you've crafted your first ornithopter, you'll be able oh, to take to the air. I can't wait to fly an ornithopter. Of the world shifts. From here, it'll make traversing the world a lot safer because you can avoid the sandworms. It'll also help you to go out into the larger world of Arrakis. Oh, that's so interesting. Here we are in the Overland map, and we're going to make our way south until we find the place known. Is Harko Village. Harko, Harko Village, Village is the oh, current cool. seat of the Harkonnen. After their city, Carthag, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion during the War of Assassins. Whoa. There's more details shit. like that in the lore of the game for players to discover and explore. That's so cool. Oh, so we're going to land oh, we, We're going to be discovering. And we're going to be exploring. We're going to explore the social space. <laughs> we're gonna Give me all that opinion. alternate timeline lore, you know? Once you arrive Carthag in Harko story, Village, so you'll be able to meet up with other players, interact with them, trade, and create guilds. Um, the game gotcha. has a variety a classic of social MMO hub area. From emotes, to grouping, to a chat. Throughout Harko Village, you'll also interact with story characters. It looks like Samuda story. people chilling. Timeless ecstasy. You'll be able to meet vendors. <laughs> Who will sell you exotic items? They let you live. That is interesting. You were able to get a feel for how the factions are viewed in the world, and of course, you'll be able to swear allegiance 
to one of the major factions, the Harkonnen or the Atreides. Swear your guild's allegiance and begin to take parts in the politics of the Imperium. Okay. Gam Jabar Guild, who are we swearing allegiance to? Hmm, <laughs> Atreides? Atreides seems like very square of us to do. I mean, we're, we're pretty square. It's like, it's like the RPG players that just build the the soldier tank build every time <laughs> and they never experiment with like the magic user or the rogue i don't what are the options i mean i know there's like atreides and harkonnen but like those are the two he named just now yeah or, or going friends, lone wolf you know you making go out no into the world and find desert imperial testing stations these are dungeon-like experiences which you and your friends can work through together so here we are landing our various ornithopters outside of one of the desert testing stations and wow. we're going to head in me and my crew flying our ornithopters really to prepare different skills and abilities these areas tend to be more of a challenge so you're not like ride sharing to work together <laughs> oh okay. shield wall <laughs> dart proof energy field generated by the Holtzman effect hell yeah level of this ability to increase lifespan learn cost it's also very destiny guardians have little shield walls in destiny LOC cycle preview I feel like that's not final <laughs> <laughs> complement right. each other. There's probably so some placeholder text in here still. Here you can equip different battlefield calculation of abilities and techniques. Pilot and assassin's remotely controlled needle tipped drone. Sick. We have three slots for abilities. Shield wall. Okay. And three slots for okay. techniques. And we, we saw those actually in action. And there are in multiple different trees beginning. depending on the type of trainers that you've interacted with in the world. So our character here is going to equip a series of abilities that complements. Slow deflection. Defensive stance deflect dart and heavy dart ranged attacks. Rest of their group. That's cool. In Knee this charge, case, we saw. Master techniques. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're heading in. And of course, you can use suspensor belts to traverse, as you'd expect. And we're going okay, to so cool. So the testing ecological testing, testing stations seemingly act as like the raids, the typical I'm like Dr. MMO Rain raids Olmecker. that you work your way yeah. through as a group. And then you get like boss battles and loot throughout. Testing stations have storylines as well as enemies to fight and loot to be found. Grenades. So you really want to go in here Grenades, and baby. experience. Playing through with friends. Working together. Flamethrower, oh, let's okay. go! Using different weapons Good lord. Trying out different techniques. Headshot. Now this player has placed out a portable cover. It's a different ability to what we've seen before. You see that the enemies here have shields. Using the flamethrower, it's easy to get through a shield because you can burn the air around them. Oh, true. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, of course, our characters are a little higher level than they were in the start of this video. So you're able to see that, uh, yeah, we can take people down a little more easily. And of course, when you it's get to the fire end of these off. areas, you find these really cool loot chests. <laughs> <laughs> in these loot chests, you find specialized components. You like flamethrower guy is going to kill his friends. The end game of Dune Awakening takes place in the deep desert. Oh, Giant spice blows will happen. That looks so drawing good. Oh, that looks so cool. To try and harvest the spice as quickly as possible. You want to get there first, and you want to try and take as much spice as you can before an enemy guild shows up to try and take it away from you. Now, of course, if you're clever and you start to lose the battle, you might place out a thumper. And that limits the time in which people are able to take spice, because then the big worm. Oh is shit! Oh. So the thumper summons like a giant area of effect worm. Yeah, that probably just closes off that area and stops people from mining the spice. I hope you've enjoyed. Cool. That's sick. It's a, it's like launching a nuke back in like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, pretty wow. cool. Cool. All right, so I'll stop. I'm going to stop uh, sharing. Yeah, uh, very, very excited. I can already see the sort of like cycle of slowly building up experience and gathering ingredients and crafting and like you build the base and that feeling of like, okay, I'm going to go out into the world to get some stuff and there's always a risk when you're out in the world. It's kind yeah. of the gameplay loop that I loved about Subnautica and the idea of doing that with friends 
sounds so good. Like collaborative Subnautica is an excellent idea. And that's kind of how this feels. So very, very excited. And again, I can imagine us with our guild, our Gamjabar guild, uh, just yeah. being like going out with Yaz or whoever, like from the, you know, Takako, me and Takako out in the fucking sands, <laughs> harvesting and escaping the worm. So right. like very exciting. Uh, what about you? Anything jump out at you? Yeah. I mean, I think it looks fun to play. Again, I'm not an MMO gamer, so a lot of it looks a little grindy, but that's just the nature of MMO games. Yeah. Uh, I think the crafting looks really spectacular. I'm very excited to build my ornithopter, build my speeder bike, build my all-terrain vehicle, and then, like, really spec it out. You know, I think that will be really enjoyable. It looks spectacular. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job of capturing the desert as a character, Mm -hmm. right? As a part of the gameplay loop and not just a backdrop that doesn't factor into your time playing the game. We'll see how annoying some of those systems Mm -hmm. get. Because I imagine like every time you go out, getting sunstroke is going to get annoying quickly. But I suspect like there will be upgrade paths where you get a still suit that then like reduces sunstroke. And then you get like a blah, blah, blah visor. And I think like by the time you get to like mid game and you're working toward the end game, you've like buffed and crafted enough things that like the annoying minor things at the start are no longer a factor. Uh, yeah. At least that's how I would imagine it will go. Yeah, or like, again, the Sunstroke debuff, it sounds like it's just you drain water quickly. And in the beginning, when you only have so much water, that's That's huge. dangerous, right. But if you have been out killing NPCs, harvesting blood, and you've got leader johns of water on you, it's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, right. I can as, be... as long as there's like systems to negate the, yeah. the desert. Because that's what's so satisfying about games like Stardew Valley, right? You start off and you like you can't really make that many crops, and it's like kind right. of annoying going to the mines because you can't get that deep, and you keep getting killed by the monsters. But you level up quite quickly, and suddenly you can be like running a farm corporate operation and making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I suspect that will be kind of the progression we'll see in this game too. I'm excited. It looks good. Uh, yeah. I, I think the combat looks very Destiny in a positive way. Like, I like the yeah, verticality yeah. with the suspensors, the idea of, like, being able to climb anything, quote-unquote. Um, I think that's good because it adds, like, this level of verticality instead of just, like, only going uh, through, like, bases on that are on one level or just have one yeah. set of stairs. Like, um, Mass Effect always felt very restrictive in that way where you're just yes. always on this level and then you go down always. the stairs to get to that lower level, but there's no way to like jump barriers or like jump over. It's like Completely. you feel very locked into the layout. This feels a lot more like here's this sprawling base. I can get the high ground, Approach come down from above you or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, so it looks good. I'm a little taken aback by how gun focused it is. That that feels very <laughs> undune to me. Yeah. But again, it's a video game. First and foremost, it's got to be fun to play, you know? Yeah. Honestly, the Dune lore and Dune consistency comes second. Like, the most lore-accurate game would be incredibly dull to actually sit down and play. So yeah. I, I appreciate that they're taking this focus on, let's just make a fun game, and it's yeah. set in the Dune universe. And, and we, we'll try to meld to those two as best as possible. Also, we'll have to see how much the late game shield thing is. Like, if getting a shield and having a shield means that guns just don't work on you at all, then suddenly you're going to have to be very like, okay, everyone has to kind of transition slowly to having melee solutions. And like, that would be very dune coded. If if suddenly, you know, at higher levels, just guns didn't work on you. I don't like, know that that's the case for two reasons, though, because he says in that video where this is a third person action shooter game. Sure. And, and that seems to be like the focus. And then also they showed that raid, which seemed like a sort of mid level, late level raid and with a yeah. flamethrower and shit, you know, and people were like popping assault rifles in that whole raid. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, so I, I don't know. And I will I, I will say like the the knee 
jump thing looks kind of mm-hmm. clunky. Like the animation was really sort of awkward. Um, and they didn't show as as much melee as what I would have expected. Like I would have expected much more Swordmaster stuff in there. They showed yeah. him doing like two things and then quickly cut to the Mentat. And so that, that does raise a bit of a red flag for me that like melee and maybe like sword stuff kind of an afterthought and it's more gunplay focused which again yeah, if it's yeah. fun to play doesn't matter you know the lore can take right. a back seat as long as it's fun to play but that's that just stood out to me i'll also point out like i'm not huge into grindy gameplay loops yeah but there are games like satisfactory and and stardew and um you know stardew valley for the purpose of getting to a certain threshold or to get enough money to like pay for the next house expansion or whatever and subnautica where you're like trying to build that next big piece of tech it justifies and makes very satisfying the grindy loop and i go oh this is why grinding exists in games and it's just done badly sometimes and i think we all we can all think of examples of it being done badly but when it's done well like in Factorio or in Subnautica, you have this thing in mind. You're like, I want to build this piece of the base or like, I want to build that sand slider, sand bike, whatever. What I need is like three more pieces of flower sand. So then like you and your buddy go out in the sand and even though you are doing what's been done a hundred times before, it feels that much more satisfying because at the end of that, you then build the thing. You're like, oh, you build yeah, it thing. totally. So yeah, as yeah. long as that loop is satisfying, you're absolutely totally. correct. The the grind is only unsatisfying in the way that it's derogatory when it's annoying and dumb, yeah. you know. And you're like, I'm grinding just because this game needed ten hours of extra padding. Yeah, and I'm not grinding yeah. because it's satisfying to get, like you're saying, to get to that end goal of I craft a cool thing that I'm so excited to use or a huge upgrade for my ornithopter that I can't wait to to use out in the field. I, I completely yeah. agree. I hope the I hope the balance of grind is done well. Uh, a, a final thought before we wrap up. Sure. They haven't mentioned anything about pricing. And MMO games mm. aren't always just priced as buy the sixty or seventy dollar game and then you have it forever, right? Like World of Warcraft is a fifteen dollar per month. It might have changed Something since like the that, last time yeah. I played, but. Uh, MMO games are typically subscription-based. And so they have not mentioned anything about what pricing will look like for Dune Awakening. And I'm curious how it'll be. Because I think they could go either route. Because Final Fantasy XIV, I believe, is a one-time purchase. Like, some MMO games do just do one-time purchase, and then they make their money by releasing DLC at a regular enough cadence that the money from DLC purchases helps them continue developing but a lot of mmos are monthly subscriptions as well so uh, they've been a little hush hush about pricing yeah. right now and i'm curious what that will look like so i okay i pulled up on reddit there's an mmo pricing spreadsheet and uh like world of warcraft you pay 60 dollars for the client and then 15 dollars a month Final right. Fantasy you 14. You buy the game and then you buy the subscription. Right. $60, 15 times a month. Uh, yep. ESO, I don't know what that is. Uh, um, Elder Scrolls Online. Elder Scrolls Online, $60 to buy. Uh, no pay to play. But then there's like... Cool. So they, they must go the DLC model. model. Yeah, where it's like convenience stuff, cosmetics and convenience, you can pay $15 a month. So yeah. the annual cost of that game is either 240 same as the other games, or $60, but it's a limited experience. Guild right. Wars 2, $50. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic is free to own, no pay to play, but $15 a month if you want junk. Uh, Solo New World, 40-40. Elyon, I don't even know what that is, 30. Yeah, um, so is. anyway... It it does seem like it's a pretty widespread. I suspect there's going to be like a base pay for sure because they have to recoup dev cost. Yeah. And then the question I, I is whether so. they're going to have either in-game currency, like freemium currency, or if they're going to do the like subscription. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll be we'll curious because it didn't also, in that video we just watched, they didn't 
clarify how the base blueprints are going to be bought and sold? Is it just an in-game store, an in-game currency that you just buy with spice? Yeah. Or are we talking like, do you remember, <laughs> do you remember the Diablo auction house debacle for many years ago, where they basically they made a real money auction thing in the game, where like if you play Diablo, you find a super rare sword, you yeah. can put it up for auction, and then people bid like eBay, like real money to buy this sword in the game. Um, and it, you know, it spectacularly backfired. Like there was backlash. Players were like, "This is fucking bullshit." Like it destroys the purpose of playing this game if you can just buy the rarest weapon if you have enough money. And also, like there was no in-game that, no. way to make money and buy any of these things. So like, it was basically just like if you want to just like pay money to cheat in the game, you can. And then we Blizzard take a cut of each purchase. It was it was experimental, and there was mas- massive backlash, and they eventually killed it. But I don't think they're going to go that route, of course. I, I think most developers have learned that like real money auction is just brings out the worst instincts in people because <laughs> they also start like gaming the system. You know, you start gaming the auction system and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I only bring those up. I don't have a concern. I don't think we're going to see anything as scummy as an auction house or like microtransactions or anything in this game at least there's been no indication i'm just curious about pricing i yeah, suspect it'll be least... base game and a standard like 15 bucks a month subscription at that least regarding the guess. at least regarding the like blueprint selling thing i know that they are positioning this as like if you want to be an architect if you want to like make your whole game experience designing really incredible houses and then selling those blueprints to other players you can. So rather than it being an exclusively premium currency that like, whatever, I, I, I suspect it's going to be something like an in-game currency that the other player yeah, receives in exchange so. for you yeah. buying. But it's also true that that could be a way to have like freemium currency, how to earn earn that premium currency is by selling to other players. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, there's, there's also, also like a the lot Fortnite more battle pass method. You know, there's a couple yeah. of different ways you can go. Yeah, Diablo Four too had that where you could kind of yeah. play for free once you have it, but you also kind want of. to have the season pass if you want extra shit. Right. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see. And uh, definitely we'll excited to we'll see more of the game. We'll certainly be playing it. So <laughs> I don't really have a choice there, <laughs> but joyfully, joyfully, don't have a choice. Well. That is, uh, that's it for today. So thank you all for watching and let us know what you think, either comment or, or message us in discord. Will you be playing with us? Are you going to ride shotgun on our, uh, sand bikes? How many Stay seats do we got to attach to our sand bikes? Let us know. How many seats? No, let us know. <laughs> just like 95 it's seats like a train on of... one sand bike. <laughs> right. It's the Gamjabar train, just like choo-choo, choo-choo, really slowly through the desert. <laughs> no promise. The last eight cars get eaten by sandworms every time. So uh, right. we rock, paper, oh scissors gosh. to see who Then it becomes there. city skylines. Then I'm building like a train infrastructure with stops along the way. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm building schedules out. You know, my type A really comes out. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're in charge um, of that. Yeah. I I'm, I look forward to it. Yeah. And and I will also add in the comments below or in Discord if you'll be playing with us, what do we call the guild, folks? We got to give yeah, the guild a name. The high-handed killers. I like high-handed killers. And nominate some names. Let's throw some ideas out there before spring 2025. Yeah. So we can get this guild started as soon as the game comes out. Indeed. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.